spent the last couple of years uh, living in the United States, um, which is an interesting experience. And I want to read you uh, one of the poems from a sequence about the States. And it's called All of Which Are American Dreams, uh, which is a reference to a song by Rage Against the Machine, you know it, um, called Know Your Enemy. All of which are American dreams. American dreams are ill-fitting shoes that fatten your heel to a blister. They appear as a figure that you try to greet from a long way off. To your call, lost in the din of the city, he never answers anything. There are long-cherished dreams that we colonize, dreams of feathery seed pots which are born on the wind to catch on our sleeves in sterile hair. Dreams are hands inked by grimy photographs or newsprint. Dreams are blazing, the land burning of forest fires that blacken burnished harvest plots. Dreams are flies that buzz and glint their wings gold. They are dull vibrations entering your body through earth. Or they are a tinny song, the mumblings of a radio script heard underwater or from the breeze on a distant shore. American dreams are whirring at night to shore us up against doubt, the fears that are always fattening. Like Fay Ray, who screamed her way out of the script of King Kong, dreams are shrieking, a mother bereft, or they silently worm their way in the tunnelled earth, wheedling openings from the bars of every prison cell. Their dreams infect you like the fever for gold, though you know they'll never amount to anything. But above all, these dreams cultivate love, their plot small among the multitude longings of the colony, where we yearn for the men or women of our dreamlands, the passages and shafts of sleep where desire is born. And all the lovers burning in the new world geography dream, like you and me, of one slow, inevitable touch. Uh, the next object that I'd like to read you about is an interesting one because it's actually a letter that went missing. Uh, a long time after Charlotte Bronte died, um, they actually discovered some letters to her teacher in, in Belgium. Um, love letters, in fact. And for a long time, people hadn't realised that she'd had this love object. Um, but she did. And uh, she wrote in one letter, Ah, monsieur, I once wrote you a letter which was hardly rational because sadness was wringing my heart, but I shall do so no more. Uh, but of course, what interested people was what was in the letter. You know, what was this letter in which she was writing in such an irrational, irrational way? And I wrote a poem imagining that letter. It's called The Buried Heart. It was a note that you were expecting when I said goodbye last time. I longed to be your mistress, but never expected it. Just the opposite. My letter to you bloomed to a flowering pear tree, the stamens soaked with dew as my heart rustled. I couldn't sleep, but instead cracked open the night with all the feelings I had for you, the letter I was writing. The words swollen in me, the syrupy ink dropping from wet blossoms as purple elixir. Somehow you knew my feelings before I did, the slow fruiting of a pendulous pear that we brewed to ripening wine together. I lay under the pear tree all night to wait. You could have kissed me, but there was nothing but bitter zoit and the ghost of the tree, the thumping of my buried heart. In the roots of the giant pear tree, I put away my letter, and now the weeds grow over it. Mouldering pages fold round themselves at the root, their hiding place. The spaces between words are summer storms. Love grows out of them. But my aged pear tree becomes a conductor. Crippled by lightning, it withers to fruit no more, and I count passing years in letters you never sent.